Hi there. So far in the Rails API tutorial, we've made good progress building out our APIs. And so far we've been testing those API endpoints using curl. Um, but over time that becomes problematic because one, it's hard to, uh, time consuming to form curl requests and B, we'd need to go back and test every single API when making a code change to make sure that we don't break things. A better way to handle that would be unit testing. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to write unit tests with RSpec. RSpec will allow us to write unit tests for all of these API endpoints, and we can just run the unit tests to verify that we haven't broken any old functionality. And we can also write unit tests as we are creating new endpoints to make sure that our new functionality works before committing it to source control or before pushing it to production. So the first thing we need to do is in the gem file, we need to install a gem for RSpec. Now there's a there's a generic um, RSpec gem, but the one we want to use is RSpec Rails, which is a version of RSpec specifically made to work with Rails. So I'll take that, and we want to install it under the development and test group. So I'll go ahead and install that with with bundle. Now if I run RSpec, it actually runs the tests, but we have zero tests at the moment. So we get zero examples and zero failures. The other thing we need to do is run Rails generate RSpec. This will in, uh, create a spec directory and create the initial spec helper and Rails helper files. So these helper files are essentially used by all the tests that we create and they do things like uh, include the correct Rails directories, uh, things like that. There we go. Now with that in place, we should be in a position to create our first test. And when, when writing unit tests or integration tests, over time you'll build up a, a structure in, in spec. So we could have model tests, controller tests, but what I'm going to write today is a request, request spec. So I'm going to create a directory requests. Let's create a file called books spec.rb. So this is the file where we're going to write our unit tests. The first thing we want to do is require Rails helper. And so that we want to require the Rails helper for all our specs essentially. And now I can start writing the test. So the first thing I'm going to do is wrap the, create the high level describe block. So I'll say describe books API. And our spec allows you to optionally specify the, the type of test you're writing. So this is a request spec. And inside I'm going to have a it block is the actual test. So this should return all books. So you can think of the describe as containing all of the tests about the book API, and then we can have it blocks for specific tests that we want to write. And what we want to do is get make a get request to API v1 books which is our index controller. And it should, that should return all the books in the system. And then we can write the expectation. So we expect 
the response to have, we can use this have HTTP status success. And I can now run that by doing RSpec. So when you run RSpec, it should run all of the tests in the spec directory. And there you can see we have one spec was run, zero failures. So this is the one test in our system at the moment, and that passes. Now, all we're doing at the moment is calling this endpoint, checking the response, and checking that the response status is a 200. But that doesn't uh, check whether there are any books actually being returned. So what we want to do now is write another expectation where we say the response body dot size and we want to say that should equal two. So we want to write a test where we say check the response and then check the number of books in the response body and check that that's equal to two. The other thing I need to do with this is convert it from JSON because this, this response will be a, a JSON object. So I need to do JSON parse response body. So if I run this test, we get a failure. So we're expecting two objects and we get zero. And that's what I would expect because we haven't actually created any books. When we run uh, RSpec tests or any unit tests in Rails, it uses a separate test database. And that database has to be seeded each time or we need to create some mock data there. So right now the database is completely empty. Now the best way to create test data, well, there's a couple of ways you can do that. But my favorite favorite way is to use factory bot, which is another gem. And it's a testing library that allows you to create uh, factories of models, essentially. So I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to add that to the gem file in the same place as we added our spec. So that's installed and I don't think there's any initialization required for this gem. So now all I need to do is inside spec, I'll create a new folder called factories. And inside here, I'll create a book RB. So this will have our factory bot definition. And I'm going to keep it really simple for now. Just have a, an empty factory definition. Now what we can do over time is build up the factory with defaults. So we can say whenever a new factory is initialized, we create a default email address or something like that. But right now, the book is so simple, I'm just going to leave it leave it empty. And then in the test, what I can do is factory bot create book. And then because I haven't added any defaults, I need to specify the author and the name of the book. So I can say 1984 author. George, apologies if I make any typos here. And then I need to create two books to satisfy the test. Let's say, sorry, the time machine, author, H.G. Wells. Okay, so 
Let's run these tests again. Oops. Okay, so I get an error message, factory not registered. And uh, I think that's because, like our spec, factory bot has a Rails version that I should be using, which means that I don't have to worry about including it in all the tests. Oh yeah, factory bot Rails. So I'll, re I'll replace that bundle and I'll run the test again. That looks better. And let's jump back over here. Oh, sorry, it should be author and title. So this is title. Let's run the tests again. There we go. We've got one failing, we've got one passing test. So now we are running these two factory bot create methods, which create two books in our test database. We call the API, we check the API return successfully, and then we check that the response body has two objects in it. Thanks for watching. That's all for this video. In the next one, we'll be building out the tests for each of the other API endpoints.